Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have the Mad. This is a photo that was taken of someone known as the Mad. His real name was George Metesky, and he was the man who terrorized New York City for 16 years while he planted explosives in public places like an absolute psychopath. I guess he was apparently angry about a workplace injury he had suffered in the years prior to his terrible crimes, so of course the normal reasonable jump to make would be not that. While no one should have ever had to suffer because of these crimes, the good news is that while he planted 33 and set off 22 of them, miraculously only 15 people ended up injured in the end. This photo of him behind bars is extremely eerie thanks to his creepy smile and haunting eyes. I might be the only one who feels it, but it just seems like something's off. You know? In our number 9 spot today, we have Ancient Preparations. This is a photo that isn't necessarily very old, but it's of some stuff that has been around for a lot longer than cameras have. These images were taken in the ancient city of Herxheim, which is located in Germany, and dates back to about 7,000 years ago. The photo shows some artifacts which, at a first glance, don't look too dark or creepy or weird, but just wait. Apparently, these artifacts and remains show clear signs of flesh stripping. Yeah, okay, wasn't expected. Expecting that one. Apparently, this was a process that was part of the preparation before consuming human flesh. So, yeah, maybe it is a pretty dark photo after all. I'm not exactly sure how all of these things were used or what exactly the process looks like, but I think that maybe that information might just be better left in the past. In our number 8 spot today, we have the Lone Scientist. This is a photo that comes to us from shortly after the Chernobyl nuclear disaster. Many of us, of course, already know plenty about it, but if unfamiliar, in April of 1986, there was an explosion and fire from a nuclear reactor in the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. This explosion happened when there was an issue as they were trying to begin an experiment which was set out to actually make the reactor more safe. Unfortunately, the way this reactor was designed placed too much responsibility in the hands of the operator. One thing led to another and it was a huge disaster and went on to become one of the worst nuclear disasters in history. The amount of radiation in the air caused alarms at the Forsmark nuclear power plant in Sweden, which was over a thousand kilometers away, so it certainly wasn't anything to take lightly. That is exactly why this photo of a lone scientist going down into the dark radioactive filled area near the meltdown is so terrifying to look at. It reminds us of the bravery of those who went to help after the disaster, and it also reminds us just how scary some of the things we have on this planet really are. In our number 7 spot today, we have the figures of the fire. This photo is both extremely unsettling and super captivating as it shows a scene after the great fire at Madame Tussauds in 1925. Of course, this wax museum is famous for the extremely lifelike wax figures that are created and find their home there, so you can only imagine the aftermath of a fire. These lifelike figures, but with missing heads and appendages, burnt skin and hair, and just clothing in disarray. Seeing this photo for the first time without knowing the story about it was definitely a bit of a confusing and terrifying experience. The heads on the ground really freaked me out for a full 5 seconds. As scary as it is, I'm just glad to hear that it's not real and just some creative of casualties rather than what this photo appears to be at first. Next up at number 6, Minnie Dean. Wilhelmina Dean, or Minnie as she was often referred to, was a nanny in New Zealand during 1880 and was a well known caretaker in her town. But something was off with the woman and soon she began having quite the dark spot on her name and career. In 1889, one of the young people under her care suddenly died, as if out of nowhere, and initially it was viewed as a freak accident, but two years later, the same thing happened again. Now with two minors perished under her care, police decided to investigate further into the matter. After a bit of sleuthing, it was concluded that under Minnie's care, the two minors were as she was attempting to take out life insurance on them. Police immediately took the remaining young boy in her care, finding it in dirty clothes and drinking curdled milk. By 1895, the investigation into her crimes continued and she was spotted trying to flee on a train with another victim in her arms. And when police searched her house, they found three more covered up victims. Eventually found guilty for all her crimes, she was the first and only woman ever hanged in New Zealand. Next up at number 5, Radiation Test Subject. In 1999, a man named Hisachi Uchi was a power plant technician and he became known for being exposed to the highest amount of radiation of any human in 
history. While working at the Tokamura nuclear power plant, after a lack of safety protocols, improper training, and just an overall pressure to meet deadlines, Uchi and his co workers made a terrible error. They mistakenly mixed an incorrect measurement of radioactive materials into the wrong tank. And as you've probably figured out, it caused a near fatal burst of gamma rays. Hisashi, who happened to be the closest to the incident, was brutally injured and sent to the hospital. Once he was there, it was discovered he had no more white blood cells, so essentially meaning that he had no remaining immune system. And despite being in intense pain with a rapidly deteriorating condition, doctors kept him alive under the family's request. So for 83 days, Uchi remained alive, being used as a test subject for experimental radiation treatment by the doctors, which I mean in their defense was the request of the family, but still he endured several cardiac arrests, lost all of his skin, and suffered brain damage as well as organ failure. One of the last things Uchi ever said was, quote, I can't take it anymore, I'm not a guinea pig. And then finally, one more cardiac arrest released him from his torture. Coming in at number 4, Mamiya. Most widely practiced between the 12th to the 17th century, although there were a few cases in the 18th century that pop up, Mamiya was widely used as a means of medicine in many European countries. Now if you can't tell by the name, Mamiya is creepily just as it sounds, the use of human remains to fix a living person's ailments. It was believed by many of the top physicians at the time that ingesting certain remains prompted the medicinal power of the mummy and could cure things like coagulated blood, pain, coughs, inflammation, cramps, and even heal open wounds. Now, they didn't just sit around eating the carcass directly, instead they would either grind the bones into a powder and drink it from there, or drink an extracted liquid from the embalmed individual. In fact, it was so popular at one point that it's believed the reason there are so few mummies these days is because of the high demand of flesh at the time. Coming in at number 3, James Jameson. One of the heirs to the Jameson whiskey family fortune, Jameson considered himself to be an adventurer of sorts and often traveled to far off lands detailing the trips in his diary. In 1888, Jameson decided to head out to explore the Congo, and while there he wrote about and demanded some gruesome things from the locals. So before beginning this expedition, Jameson discovered that the area he was visiting was known to have a population that participated in the eating of other humans. Apparently Jameson set out to witness it firsthand, which I mean, why was that his dream? A little suspicious if you ask me, but I digress. <laughs> According to Asad Faran, who was his translator for the trip, Jameson bought a girl from a trader of slaves for for a few handkerchiefs and gave her over to the tribe to be Allegedly, he didn't pay the tribe directly, but in a roundabout way, he did sort of pay to have this girl killed. What's even more gross is that he proceeded to draw and paint watercolors of the gruesome event while it happened, which again, just wrong on so many levels. Coming in at number 2, Cambodian Barbies. You may have been taught about the Khmer Rouge in history class, but if they don't ring a bell, essentially they were an extreme communist regime in Cambodia that held government between 1975 to 1979. They were known for being extremely cruel and committed some of the most horrifying acts of genocide in history, with nearly 2 million perishing under their ruling. Now, during their radical rule, the entire country was isolated from all foreign influences. This included closing schools, hospitals, factories, banks, foreign agriculture. They believed this would stimulate the rebirth of the country, but of course, all it did was send it into desolate famine and poverty. Led by a man named Pol Pot, the people of the country could not forage for food, despite the fact that everyone was starving, and anyone who disobeyed the orders was killed. Apparently, as the people People became more and more desperate, they began to turn to folk magic, turning Barbie dolls into smoking talismans for luck. Thankfully, since its dissolution in 1999, all the leaders have been jailed for their atrocities and the people are freed from the genocidal regime. And last up, 
in our number one spot, the Rabbit Woman. Her name was Mary Toft, and in 1726, she became known throughout Surrey, England, as having been the woman who gave birth to rabbits. Now, I know what you're thinking, that isn't possible. And you would be right. But still, the story of how she convinced people it was real was crazy. Apparently, Toft was actually pregnant at one point, but miscarried, and it could have been this that sent her into her madness. Toft began declaring that she was giving birth to various animal parts, and so her local doctor became involved in the case. At first, everyone actually believed her, as in fact, a rabbit did, well, come out of her. And with a doctor backing up her claims, the king and his royal surgeon got involved. Unlike her local doctor, the king surgeon was skeptical, and after discovering corn inside the stomach of one of the rabbits and hay in their droppings, it proved the animal hadn't developed inside Mary. Eventually, Mary Toft admitted to the hoax and explained that she had manually inserted the animals inside her to make the delivery as realistic as possible. She was immediately imprisoned for fraud, and the medical community was ridiculed for having been fooled. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have the fire. This is a photo that comes to us from 2003 at the Station Nightclub in Rhode Island, and it shows the band Great White as they perform. While this seems like just a regular photo that someone took on their Motorola Razor, what ensued shortly after this photo was taken is absolutely tragic. Basically, as the band performed, there were some pyrotechnics that were set off, and while this was meant to be a spectacular display, it only ended up in disaster. The fireworks ended up setting all of the flammable acoustic foam in the walls and ceiling on fire, and within one minute, everything that was combustible was up in flames. Within two minutes, the entire club was fully engulfed in black smoke, and people were having trouble finding exits. In the end, this fire took the lives of 100 people, and another 230 were injured as a result. It has gone down in US history as one of the worst and most deadly nightclub fires. In our number 9 spot today, we have the core. This photo shows a physicist named Harold Agnew, and while this looks like a relatively normal, non-threatening photo, what he has in his hand is truly devastating. Harold is holding the nuclear core of what was nicknamed the Fat Man Atomic Bomb. This means that Harold is holding the nuclear core of the atomic bomb that was later dropped on Nagasaki in 1945. The immediate blast of course took many lives, but so did the long-term effects of the bomb like radiation illnesses and that sort of thing. It's crazy to look at a photo like this because it seems so perfectly normal when he literally has a life-changing, world-ending device in the palm of his hand. Also, I don't think I could ever hold something like that. Not only would I just not want to, but I don't think I could even get near it for fear of something going wrong. In our number 8 spot today, we have the eruption. This is a photo that is showing Mount Pinatubo, which is located in the Philippines on June 15th, 1991. That is the day that this volcano erupted into what would be the second largest volcanic eruption of the 20th century. Certainly impressive, also extremely terrifying. This photo shows the pyroclastic flow full of hot gas and rock being flung into the air. Eruptive activity in the volcano first started on April 2nd of that year, which prompted researchers to set up seismographs in the area. By June, the volcano was having a group of progressively shallower eruptions before, on June 12th, the volcano had its first spectacular eruption, which sent an ash column 19 kilometers up into the atmosphere. Additional smaller explosions continued on June 13th, which then led to some intense seismic activity. After more highly gas charged magma reached the surface, on June 15th, the volcano once again exploded, this time sending the cloud of ash 40 kilometers up into the atmosphere. Volcanic ash and pumice blanketed the surrounding areas, and pyroclastic flows filled what were once deep valleys with fresh volcanic deposits. It is truly magnificent and extremely powerful, and this photo shows just that. In our number 7 spot today, we have post war. This is a photo that is said to have been taken in 1946, just after the end of the Second World War. Story goes that the person in this photo is a soldier who had just returned home from war, which would already be difficult and challenging enough, but as he returned home, he came to hear the news that unfortunately, despite his survival, his family had lost their lives during the war. There is no doubt about the impact that either World War had on the world, and how the impact doesn't stop once the war is over. These wars changed the course of history, and they changed changed people's lives forever. This is definitely a difficult photo to look at, and it's an eerie reminder of those dark times. In our number 6 spot today, we have All Hallows Eve. In this day and age when Halloween time comes around, we see all types of costumes. We see a few spooky scary ones, but for the most part we see princesses, or fairies, or 
basketball players, or some sort of pop culture reference, but back in the day, Halloween was a terrifying time. I'm not saying that because people dressed as all these elaborate scary creatures, I just mean that the absolute scraps people would throw together to make a Halloween mask are truly scarier than any creature I could come up with. This photo just shows a nice little family as they're ready to celebrate the spookiest day of the year, and oh my gosh, it is actually terrifying. Like I feel like I'm looking at a still from the movie Strangers or something. It looks so terrifying, but it's likely just a completely harmless and innocent celebration. Honestly, while I'm kind of over seeing people show up to Halloween parties as cats, I'll take that over a potato sack any day apparently. In our number 5 spot today we have the experiment. This is a photo that comes from some experiments that were being conducted from the French neurologist Duchenne de Bologna. He was best known for his use of photographs during his experiments as evidenced by, well, this video. He was also known for his research into the use of electrical stimulation of muscles, and of course these photos really help to capture exactly that. These photos have gone down in history, not even necessarily for what they show medically, but just because of how startling they are, and the often grotesque facial expressions seen on the patient. The experiment being conducted in this shot was meant to determine how exactly the muscles in the face produce facial expressions, which he believed at the time were directly linked to the soul of a man. Of course these strange faces the patient is making are due to the electrical stimulation, but the photos from his experiments truly make it look like the patients are going through some kind of torment or torture. As far as I know, the man in this photo was totally fine both before and after the experiment, despite what it may appear as, which is always what we want to hear. In our number 4 spot today we have the Spectre. This is a photo that was taken in England in 1963 and it became known as the Spectre of the Newbie Church. That of course is because of the ghostly figure that can be seen in this photo. I'm always a little suspicious of ghost photos, some are certainly more convincing than others, but Photoshop in 1963 wasn't exactly as accessible and easy as it is now. The photo is said to have been taken by Reverend K.F. Lord inside of the Newby Church which is located in North Yorkshire, England. Of course, I mean like many of us are going to do, people were really skeptical of this apparition and just believed that it was a well done case of double exposure, which to be fair is entirely possible possible. The reverend continued to swear up and down however that the photo was not doctored, so at this point there's no proof to prove either side and it's just a game of he said she said. So what do you guys think? Apparition caught slipping or is the reverend making it up? In our number 3 spot today we have the eruption of Mount St. Helens. Mount St. Helens is a stratovolcano located in Skamania County, Washington. The volcano is best known for its huge and disastrous eruption on May 18th, 1980. This photograph comes from the photographer Robert Landsberg, who of course was in the area at the time of the eruption. Before the eruption, he had visited the area in order to photograph and document all of the changes that were happening. On May 18th, he was within a few miles of the volcano when it erupted. Since he unfortunately was so close to the explosion, he knew he would be unable to escape this disaster, so instead of focusing on the impossible, he focused on taking as many pictures as possible. Robert was obviously incredibly brave and dedicated, but he was also very smart. After snapping as many photos as he could, including this one, he then secured his camera in his backpack and covered his backpack with his body. He knew he was unlikely to survive, but he wanted to make sure that these photos did. His body was found 17 days later with his backpack still underneath him. His film was of course developed and has provided geologists with some really valuable insights with his close documentation of the eruption. In our number 2 spot today we have the boneyard. This is a photo that comes from what is called a boneyard. Basically, the photo was taken during a time when it it was normal for overcrowded cemeteries to dig up skeletons after five years if the family didn't continue to pay for them to stay buried. Yeah. It's not a great rule, but it happened and it's a part of our weird dark history. This particular photo comes from near the Colon Cemetery in Cuba and it shows what they did with these dug up bones. They put them in this boneyard that eventually grew to be 30 feet deep. That is so creepy. This photo shows how the area became a popular tourist destination and this photo is said to have been taken after the Spanish American War and it shows two American soldiers playing with bones. Maybe not the best idea, I mean a little respect for those who 
past might be in order. It definitely is an eerie sight to behold. In our number one spot today, we have the crypt. This is a photo that comes to us from the early 1900s, and it shows the area that is beneath the church of Santa Maria della Concezione di Cappuccini, which is located in Rome, Italy. This area is known as the Capuchin Crypt, and it is a little eerie to say the least. That is because the walls are lined with skeletal remains. It is said that on the walls, there are the remains of 3,700 bodies believed to be the Catholic friars who were buried by their order. It is definitely terrifying to look at, and it seems a little nightmare inducing, but the Catholic order insists it isn't meant to be so macabre. They explain that it's actually meant to be a silent reminder of the swift passage of life on Earth and our own mortality. Well, I can say it definitely does that. Starting off this countdown, we have the plot to kill. This photo was taken of Thomas Bart Whittaker on the left and his younger brother Kevin on the right, just hours before Thomas planned to have his family killed. So apparently the two brothers were just goofing off and their mother wanted to take a photo of them. Then later, they went out for dinner as like a little celebration for Thomas completing his exams, which was a lie. Anyways, while they were at the restaurant, Thomas had his friend enter his home and retrieve a gun and stay of burglary. He then waited at the front door for Thomas's family to return home. Once they did, he shot Thomas's mom and brother. His dad managed to survive. The photo shows Thomas's happy younger brother, but little did he know that his older brother literally had a plot to kill him. It's so disturbing. In our ninth spot, we have Victor Barrio. But before we go any further, if you guys are liking this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up and of course, subscribe to our channel. Come on guys, it really helps us out, so hit that button, subscribe, ring that little bell. Victor Barrio was a 29 year old Spanish bullfighter. Sadly, on July 9th, 2016, his bullfighting days came to an end when a 529 kilogram bull's horn pierced through his chest. This moment was captured in front of a live audience and also was broadcasted on live TV. Some people managed to get photos as this happened and it's horrifying. You can see the look of pain on his face as the bull's horn just plunges through him. Like I feel so bad for him and for all the people that had to witness it. It's so scary. In our eighth spot we have the Panama Hikers. Chris Kremers and Lizanne Froon were two young Dutch females that saved up to take a trip to Panama. Except while on a hike in the Panamanian jungle, the two disappeared. It wasn't until months later that their bodies were found, but it's still unclear how the two died. The last photos taken of them were in April of 2014, the day that they went on the hike. They are selfies of the girls looking very excited to be on the trip. These photos were found on their camera, which was found in a backpack along the banks of a river. The camera also contained other pictures, like of the jungle in the dead of night. Maybe they were using the camera's flash as a source of light. Another photo showed the back of Chris's head and it was bleeding. Again, it's so scary looking at these photos. Like these poor young girls had no clue what was about to happen to them and they were so excited for their trip. Coming in at number seven, we have the drowning. On October 22nd, 2003, Tina Watson and her husband, David Gabriel, went out scuba diving on their honeymoon. They just got married 11 days earlier and scuba diving was part of their honeymoon itinerary. Now in this photo, if you look right at the back, you can see a diving Diver laying on the sea floor. That's Tina Watson. A few minutes before this photo was taken, it's believed that her husband turned off her air supply and held her underwater until she drowned. Then he swam up to the surface to alert other divers that she was in trouble. The photo was captured accidentally, and you can see the divers going to help Tina. Some say he held her underwater until she drowned. Others say he saw her struggling as a new scuba diver and just kind of left her there to die on her own. Either way, he pleaded guilty to manslaughter and that was the last photo ever taken of her. In our number six spot today, we have the disguise. Speaking of the Second World War, as it began to come to a close, many of the Germans who were involved in all of the many, many violations of human rights began to flee or try and hide or disguise themselves for fear of being persecuted. One of those was, of course, the worst of them all, Hitler himself. This photo, or rather series of photos, was created by the US government as an attempt to document the many ways that he could have disguised himself in order to escape being recognized and captured. At the
the time, the fear of him being able to escape responsibility and go on living his life abroad was very real. I mean, there have been others who actually did manage to do just that, and that is exactly the reason for these photos. There is also something kind of interesting and bizarre about what happens when we take away the features of his that we know him by. In the end, he didn't escape and go on to live abroad, but he did escape being held responsible before the world. In our number 5 spot today, we have the Titanic. We all know the story of the Titanic. I mean, it's one of the most famous in history, and this photo comes from just before the historic iceberg encounter. On April 10th, 1912, the Titanic set sail on its maiden voyage, heading from Southampton over to New York City. The ship took a couple of stops along the way, one in France, one in Ireland, before setting off for the United States officially, and somewhere along the beginning part of its journey, someone was able to snap a photo of the ship as it sailed. It's not clear exactly where this photo was taken, but it is thought to be the last photo taken of the ship before its tragic end. Considering it was only four days after the ship set sail that it hit the iceberg, it is likely that this photo came not too long before the terrible day. In our number four spot today, we have the lipstick killer. This is a photo that comes to us from December 10th, 1945. If looking at this image gives you a shudder down your spine, that absolutely makes sense, as it was written by a terrible person known as the lipstick killer. This photo is an image of a note he left written on the wall at one of his crime scenes. The photo comes from the apartment of Francis Brown, as just before he wrote this message, he took her life. After this message was left, he ended up taking the life of one other person because he was finally caught by the police six months later. The message scrawled in the photo reads, For heaven's sake, catch me before I kill more. I cannot control myself. It is an absolutely chilling note with a horrific backstory. In our number three spot today, we have bad politics. This is a photo that shows the former first lady, Rosalind Carter, and you may or may not be wondering who that man next to her is. And to that I say, my friends, that is the horrible, horrible monster that is John Wayne Gacy, aka the killer clown. This photo was taken at a Polish Constitution Day celebration in Chicago in 1978, which is the same year that Gacy was arrested for his crimes, so at the point this photo was taken, he had already taken the lives of at least 20 people. The reason he was there and was able to meet the first lady is because he was not only the worst of the worst, he also somehow became the Democratic precinct captain in the Chicago suburbs in the 1970s, and he was the marshal of the Polish parade. The picture is even signed, quote, to John Gacy, best wishes, Rosalind Carter. It's terrible. I hate it so much. I feel very bad for anyone who had to meet him. In our number two spot today, we have the first day. This is a photo that shows Dorothy Count Scoggins as she joined her new school. What should be a perfectly normal activity was certainly anything but for Dorothy as she was the first black person to attend Harding High School in Charlotte, North Carolina, which was previously an all-white school. After the passing of the Purcell Plan in 1956, there were 40 students who applied for transfers, and Dorothy was one of four who was accepted. This photo clearly shows that although small steps were being taken within the law to prevent segregation, there were no steps being taken within the students. As Dorothy just tries to get an education, you can see her peers clearly trying to disturb her peace. After four days of this kind of treatment, Dorothy's parents ended up withdrawing her from the school over fears for her safety. These images, however, were seen around the world. This photo acts as quite the reminder for where we were really not all that long ago. In our number one spot today, we have the Challenger crew. This is a photo that was taken of the clearly very excited Challenger crew as they walked down the ramp ready to head off on their mission. The crew even included 37-year-old Krista McAuliffe, who was a high school social studies teacher. She had won a spot on this mission through a program with NASA called the Teacher in Space Program, and she had trained diligently for months in order to be the first non-military person in space. On January 28, 1986, the Challenger mission proved to be fateful just 73 seconds after liftoff. Two rubber O-rings failed because of the cold temperatures of the morning, and on live television, the world watched as the spacecraft broke apart and plunged into the ocean, sadly taking the lives of everyone on board. It is an absolutely tragic event, made even more chilling by this final photo. Starting off this countdown, we have experimental electrical stimulation. Taken in 1856, this photo shows a man undergoing an experiment with electrical stimulation. And by the looks of it, it was quite painful. So back then, they would use the stimulation for a number of reasons. One, to manipulate an experiment on one's nervous system, and two, to treat certain diseases and disorders. Nowadays, this treatment is much safer. They use it to help with injured muscles or manipulate nerves to reduce pain. But back then, they were still trying to get it right. So it makes you wonder how many people underwent these painful experiments. 
and how many people were accidentally killed before they found the correct voltage to use. In our ninth spot today, we have the lipstick killer. And if you're liking this video so far, then smash that like button because it really helps us out. William George Herons was an American criminal and potential serial killer that confessed to be the lipstick killer. The lipstick killer was someone who took the lives of a number of women and would often leave a creepy message at the scene of the crime in lipstick. That's how he got the name, Lipstick Killer. The photo I'm about to share with you was a creepy message that he left at the scene of one of his crimes in 1945. He wrote, For heaven's sake, catch me before I kill more. I cannot control myself. Now this message is creepy for a number of reasons. First, you got a man on the loose who can't control his impulses and he just admitted it. And second, look how creepy it just looks with the lipstick smeared everywhere and such. It took the police six more months from the time this message was written to finally catch William. This photo is just a scary and dark reminder of the horrors this man committed. Moving on to number eight, we have the poverty. This photo from 1948 shows just how bad poverty was in the 1940s to 50s in America. This is when the poverty rate was at its highest. In this photo, Mr. and Miss Ray Shalifo were facing eviction from their Chicago apartment. They were so desperate for money that they had to sell their kids. Now this photo was a staged photo, but it still shows a heartbroken mother not knowing what else to do. Within two years, all four kids were sold into different homes. It also sheds the light on how different laws were back then. Nowadays, that is very much illegal to do. Anyways, this is a very heartbreaking photo. Like, I can't imagine what that family went through. Moving on to number seven, we have the nuclear shadow. On August 6, 1945, the United States dropped an atomic bomb on Hiroshima. The bomb was so powerful that people up to a mile of it were vaporized. All that was left of them was their shadows burnt into stone. This is a creepy image that shows one of the bomb's victims. It's a silhouette of an elderly man or woman with a cane. So the bomb's light and heat were so powerful that it bleached any exposed surfaces. In this case, the person's body shielded that part on the sidewalk, and that's why an imprint was left there. All around Hiroshima, there were multiple of these body outlines. It's very disturbing and sad. It just shows their final moments alive. In our sixth spot, we have the Dyatlov Pass incident. In February of 1959, a group of nine experienced hikers set out to traverse the snowy mountains of Siberia. However, they all ended up mysteriously dying one by one. This photo was one of the last photos taken of them. Now this case has been debated about for years and there's tons of theories as to what happened to them. Some say they were hit by an avalanche at night and died from exposure. Others say a yeti got them. In fact, there was a picture of a creature that looks like a yeti found on one of the explorer's cameras. But it's a very odd case. Like their tent was found ripped open from the inside. Two bodies were found and they were only wearing underwear in the freezing cold. Another explorer's body was missing her tongue, eyes, and lips, and two of the other bodies had major chest fractures. To cause someone that much damage, it would be like equivalent to a car crash. And another hiker had a really high level of radiation on their clothes. It's just crazy, and to this day, we don't know what truly happened. We all have these theories, but the only ones that really know are the hikers in the photo. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the submarine murder. Back in August of 2013, freelance journalist Kim Wall got an interview with Danish inventor Peter Madsen. As part of the interview, Kim was set to take a trip on his homemade submarine. This photo shows Kim aboard the submarine just before her trip. Sadly, once inside, Peter killed her and dismembered her body. Why did he do this? Well, some say he became fascinated with murder and torture. Evidence showed that he had been watching videos of women being killed on his computer. And shortly before he beheaded Kim, he watched a video on it. So it was clear that he had a fascination with it. It's sad that Kim had to be his victim. In our fourth spot, we have the Facebook murder. A couple of hours after this picture was taken, Cheyenne Anton left, used the black belt she is seen wearing in that photo to strangle Brittany Gargle. The two were best friends, but apparently got into a heated argument and Cheyenne hit and strangled Brittany. Imagine taking a selfie with someone you thought you could trust just for them to go and kill you a couple hours later. It is so sick. Now, Cheyenne actually got away with this murder for two Two years until police finally found this photo on her Facebook and noticed that the belt that she was wearing was the same one found at the crime scene. She then pleaded guilty to manslaughter and was sentenced to seven years in prison. Moving on to number three, we have Parkour Gone Wrong. 
Pavel Kashin was known for his dangerous stunts and abilities. In 2013, he challenged himself to do a backflip on the edge of a 16 floor building. He successfully completed the backflip, but as he landed, he lost his footing and fell over the edge. He died instantly. This photo was captured by his friend while he was performing the stunt. You can see he's in midair doing his trick. Sadly, that was the last stunt he ever performed. And at number two, we have the Stalker. On February of 2017, best friends Abby Williams and Libby German headed out for a hike in Indiana. This photo is of Abby Williams, taken right before they were both murdered. What's very disturbing is that in the background of these photos, you can literally see their killer lurking there. Apparently, the man was stalking them for quite some time, and in the girl's photo roll, they actually got some pictures of him, probably because they felt like he was following them. So, in the last photo ever taken, of Abby, you can literally see her killer behind her. It makes me so sick. Worst of all, he's never been caught. There's currently a reward for anyone that can identify the man though, so hopefully they can get some justice soon. And in our number one spot, we have the gruesome scene. This photo is going to send shivers down your spine. But before I show you, let me give you a quick backstory. So this photo was taken of Travis Alexander while he was taking a shower. It was taken by his girlfriend and murderer, Jody, shortly before she stabbed him 27 to 29 times. She also slit his throat nearly ear to ear and shot him in the head. It was a very gruesome and sinister murder. In this photo, you can see how uncomfortable Travis looks. It's almost as if he knew she was up to something. He looks absolutely terrified. Now, the camera that captured this photo was actually tossed into his washing machine as an attempt to destroy it, but it didn't work and some of the photos were still salvageable, like this one and one that she took of Travis's dead bloody body. I saw it, you don't want to see. Starting off this countdown, we have 1930s Halloween. Who here likes Halloween? Smash that like button if you do. And also let me know what your favorite costume is that you've ever worn. Back in the 1930s, Halloween looked a lot different. Obviously, they didn't have a party city or spirit Halloween where they could just go to and buy a costume from. No, no, costumes were often homemade, which makes them look terrifying. Look at this photo. These individuals are in Halloween costumes. I'm sorry, but who are they dressed up as? The women look terrifying with those weird masks on. I would freak out if I saw someone walking down the street dressed like that on Halloween. Like those are some next level purge masks. They seriously give me the creeps. In our ninth spot, we have the exorcism of Annalise. Annalise was a devout Catholic woman who is said to have been possessed by five different demons. It all started one day when she blacked out at school and began walking around all dazed. She didn't remember anything. People around her said that she was in a trance-like state. Soon, these blackouts became more frequently. Things started to get worse and she started to convulse and hallucinate randomly. Eventually, she claimed that she saw the face of the devil and could hear demons whispering in her ears. In the end, she underwent 67 exorcisms, some lasting up to four hours. This photo of Annalise shows you in her possessed state. It's very creepy, and her story is honestly so disturbing and scary and sad. Moving on at number eight, we have the mutated piglet. In 1986 in Ukraine, an accident at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant caused the reactor to explode. This explosion had lasting effects, and to this day, it's still considered the worst nuclear disaster. A lot of people and animals were affected by this. In fact, the animals that lived there in the late 1980s suffered tremendously from the nuclear waste. This is a picture of a mutated piglet. It was born with a deformity, believed to have been caused by its mother being exposed to the radiation. This pig is now on display at the Ukrainian National Chernobyl Museum, you know, in case you wanted to go and see it up close. In our seventh spot, we have The Wake. This photo was taken in around the 1920s during a wake for the man featured in the photo. Well, directly to the left of the photo by the two mourning individuals appears to be a ghostly apparition. Is this the deceased man still lingering over his body? Or is it another ghostly entity? Well, we don't know for sure. 
but what we do know is that this photo is very, very creepy. I mean, you can see the ghost as clear as day. Hopefully, it's just the man saying one last goodbye before going to the afterlife and not a demon. In our sixth spot today, we have the Stanford Prison Experiment. The Stanford Prison Experiment set out to explore the psychological effects of imprisonment. It started on August 14th, 1971. A university psychology professor gathered a bunch of student volunteers and divided them into groups. 11 were assigned the role of guards and 10 were assigned the role of prisoners. It's going to be a two week experiment where the volunteers would play their part in a make believe prison. But the experiment had to be ended after only six days. The volunteers got way into character. Some guards turned sadistic. They really exercised their power over the prisoners. Whereas many prisoners became depressed and showed signs of extreme stress. The study and this creepy photo provide a chilling look at what humans are capable of. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the wild man suit. Not only is this a dark photo from history, but it's also a very mysterious one. This suit that you're seeing is what historians named the wild man suit. It consists of a double layered set of armor covered in one inch long iron nails. What was it used for you may ask? Well, no one knows for sure. One popular theory is that it was used during bear hunting in the 1800s. Or it was used in bear baiting. Don't know if that's true, but it looks very uncomfortable to wear. Maybe it was a twisted torture device. The executioner would wear it and then give the prisoner a nice big and tight hug. I don't know, I'm just guessing, but either way it's messed up. In our fourth spot today, we have the ruins of Hiroshima. Here is another very scary and sad photo taken after America dropped a bomb on Hiroshima. The bomb had an explosive yield equal to 15,000 tons of TNT. In fact, it destroyed five square miles of the city. This photo shows the ruins of the once beautiful city. Buildings and wildlife were completely destroyed by this bomb. In fact, the US remains to be the only country to ever use an atomic bomb in war. It had a huge lasting impact on the city that we should never forget about. In our third spot today, we have the Titanic. On April 15th, 1912, the infamous ship, the Titanic, began to sink. 1,500 passengers sank with the ship after it hit an iceberg during its maiden voyage. The few that did manage to survive fled on lifeboats. This is a picture of the last lifeboat approaching the rescue ship. You can see it was crammed with passengers as all the lifeboats were. This photo serves as a reminder of this great tragedy in history and all the innocent individuals that were impacted by this disaster. In our second spot today, we have the San Francisco earthquake of 1906. In 1906, San Francisco was hit with a massive 7.9 magnitude earthquake. It has since garnered the title of the most powerful earthquake in Northern Californian history. This earthquake not only caused homes to come crumbling down, but it also started a number of fires throughout the city. Hundreds of fires started as a result of the broken gas lines. These fires went on for three days, engulfing 500 city blocks. More than 3,000 people passed away from the earthquake and fires. 20,000 buildings were destroyed and 200,000 citizens were left homeless. It was very sad and tragic. This is a photo from this devastating time. This was after all the damage was done. People lined the streets and just stared at the destruction that the earthquake caused. And in our number one spot today, we have the American Buffalo. Now this photo is absolutely heartbreaking. This was taken in 1892 Michigan and that is an actual mountain made up of buffalo skulls. That means thousands of buffaloes were slaughtered. No wonder why the buffalo population is considered near threatened and are at risk for extinction. So these skulls were then ground down to be used in making bone china or refining sugar and producing fertilizer. It's said that around the end of the 18th century, there were between 30 to 60 million buffaloes on the continent. When this photo was taken, the population was at only 456. They literally slaughtered millions of buffalo. What makes it worse is that some of the buffalo were killed purposely just so that the indigenous individuals individuals were deprived of them. Starting off at number 10, vampire killings. So starting us off, we have the supposed vampire killings from the 1800s. Now, spoiler alert here, they weren't actually vampires. Well, I guess I don't know that for sure, but I'm gonna go out on a limb and say they weren't. Anyways, back in the 1800s, people in New England believed that cadavers were rising from their graves at night and preying on the living. So to solve this problem, they began exhuming the cadavers. Now, now, some kept it simple and just turned the 
cadaver face down. But others jump to more extreme methods like ripping the bones apart and rearranging them, or burning the deceased person's heart and inhaling the smoke. Apparently at the time, it was believed inhaling the smoke cured tuberculosis, though I can only imagine it made matters much worse for them. Some towns were so into the ritual that they would even hold festivals during the process and celebrate the exhumation and subsequent destruction of the corpses all together. So while it was incredibly unsettling, they did truly believe they were vampires haunting them in the night, so I guess it gave them some peace of mind. Next up at number 9, dentures. While today dentures are made from composite resin or sometimes porcelain, during the 18th and 19th centuries of course those materials weren't available. But as you can imagine, people were still losing teeth at an even higher rate due to the high sugar diet, attempted teeth whitening which was really just wearing away their enamel instead of brightening it, and the overall lack of knowledge around hygiene. So dentures were still needed and wanted by many. So what was their material of choice? Well, for the easiest and most profitable route, many would acquire the teeth from dead bodies. Although if you had some money, you might be able to afford dentures made from ivory. Other materials were sometimes the teeth of animals or wood, but honestly, I think we can all agree that none of those sound like terribly sanitary options, considering professional physicians at the time weren't sterilizing instruments and some didn't even believe in disinfecting prior to surgery. Next up at number 8, stained glass. If you walk into just about any old church, you'll notice the walls are decorated with beautiful stained glass. But what might surprise you is that in some of the particularly older pieces, there is a strange ingredient that helps it all come together. In 1112, a German monk wrote about the process of creating the beautifully colored glass, and as he detailed, it starts off innocently enough, adding sand and potash at a high temp until it becomes molten. From there, they'd add a stabilizer before coloring the glass with different metallic oxides like copper, cobalt, and gold. But once the glass was cooled and shaped, the small details were added by paint. They made the paint usually from lead or copper and would then suspend it in urine. So quite literally some of those old stained glass windows were painted with pea paint. Which I mean kind of just makes me giggle if I'm honest, but it is definitely a weird ingredient to think about being in paint. Coming in at number 7 leather bound books. Nowadays it's unusual to even find real leather on anything, but once upon a time the leather on books wasn't even from cows, it was from people. Called anthropodermic bibliopegy, the books were made in a similar way as they would now, but obviously with one huge difference. They used human skin instead of an animal. While there are actually only 18 confirmed books of its kind that still exist, we have no idea just how many there could have been all those years ago. Allegedly the books were usually made from executed convicts, and during the French Revolution there were rumors that a tannery for human and skin was established outside of Paris. I mean, it kind of gives me the willies to think about it, and I'm just glad we've moved on to a different material to bind our books today. Coming in at number six, we have the Mickey Mouse gas masks. Did you know that Walt Disney once designed a very creepy gas mask for children? Yeah. So the use of chemical war during World War II made it so everyone would carry around a gas mask with them, just in case. So in 1942, Mr. Disney himself invented a Mickey Mouse inspired gas mask. It was meant to calm terrified kids. Yes, I will repeat, this was meant to calm terrified kids. And clearly scare parents because that seriously is nightmare fuel. Imagine seeing people walking around wearing those. No thank you. That's anything but comforting. Mickey looks like a demon. Anyways, with the help of the Sun Rubber Company, about 1,000 of these masks were made. They thought kids would be more inclined to wear them if they were in the shape of a fun-loving mouse. But in the end, they just turned out to be fairly creepy, like if you agree. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the expressionless. So this creepy looking mannequin thing is a dummy that nurses would use in training back in 1968. Okay, if I was a nurse and had to pretend that that was my patient, bro I'd quit. She looks terrifying. Anyways, that's all I could find about 
this dummy. Like, I'm not sure if they would practice CPR on her or what. But you may recognize this photo because it inspired the creepypasta called The Expressionless. So the creepypasta is fake, but the photo and the dummy is very much real. I swear, did they purposely make the dummy terrifying to scare the nurses or what? In our fourth spot, we have Gas Mask Island. About 110 miles south of Tokyo, Japan, there's a small island called Miyakijima, otherwise known as Gas Mask Island. How did it get its name? Well, this island is home to Mount Oyama, a very active volcano that emits poisonous sulfuric gas. So all of the residents have to carry gas masks with them at all time. You know, just in case these gas levels rise unexpectedly. This photo shows the residents of the island wearing their gas masks. And I know what you're thinking. This photo looks like it came straight out of an end of the world horror movie. I agree, it's insane. You thought wearing medical masks was bad? Imagine wearing a gas mask around town. Would not be fun. Moving on to number three, we have post-mortem photography. So back in the day, there was an interesting trend that people would follow, which was post-mortem photography. AKA, taking photos with a person who was recently deceased. So the woman in the middle of this photo has sadly passed away. So they did this for a number of reasons. It was a way to deal with their grief. It helped preserve the image of the loved one that passed away, and it was also a little memento. This trend became common in Victorian England when there was a rise in short lifespans for the young, which is sad. And in a way, this is a sweet way to preserve the memory of a loved one. But it's creepy. Hella creepy, you have to admit it. Coming in at number two, we have the crucifixion. This creepy photo from 1890 Germany is of a woman who suffered from mental health issues. This was their method of treatment. They thought that this would cure her. Basically, they locked her in a cellar for 12 hours a day. For those 12 hours, she was changed up in the crucifixion pose. Apparently, this was supposed to cure her mental illness. Okay, I'm no psychologist or, you know, doctor, but that alone would drive me insane and make everything worse. Now, this was done for a number of reasons. They thought that when you make someone pretend to be crucified, they will think, well, good thing I'm not actually being crucified. Hey, my life isn't that bad. Bingo, problem solved. No, honey, no, it does not work like that, I'm sorry. And in our number one spot, we have the haunting photo. Ready to not be able to sleep tonight? Take a look at this photo. This is the creepiest thing I have ever seen. This is just a normal family photo taken back in the day, but the camera quality makes them all look like ghosts. I'm sorry, but that man is not human. He's like a zombie ghost. Those eyes, don't stare into them for too long or else he's going to possess you, I swear. Even the baby looks hella creepy. They literally look like a family of ghosts or demons. They're gonna haunt me in my dreams, I swear. Mm -hmm. 